So what we're going to do now is start with a different ODE that will not have constant coefficients. So we're going to start out with a given second order <coughs> ODE. So we'll start out with the homogeneous. The difference between this and all the other second orders we looked at, they were all linear. So they had constant coefficients in front of the y, y prime, y double prime. So this one, it's at least homogeneous, our q of x function 0. So on one sense, it's a little bit simple, but we're going to have uh, functions in front of our y primes now. So let's say you know this, and you also know a non-trivial solution. We'll call this non-trivial solution y1. So in this particular, without knowing anything about f2, f1, and f0, what would the trivial solution be? Zero. y equals 0. What's the derivative of 0? Zero? 0. What's the second derivative of 0? Zero? 0. 0. So you plug in 0, 0, 0 for every y, y prime, y double prime. It doesn't matter what those coefficient functions are. You're going to add up to 0. So that's the trivial solution. So assume you don't have, you have your solution is not y equals 0. So here, non-trivial y1 is not. Um, now you want to be a little careful. If I write y1 not equal to 0, what that usually means is uh, y1 at some x value is not 0. So the way that you write is not always 0 is you actually use the triple equal sign. So y1 is not the 0 function. It means y1 of x is not the 0 function. <coughs> All right, so we've got a non-trivial solution. We were given this, so we're given the original ODE, and we're given for free a non-trivial solution. <coughs> and what we're going to do is construct the other solution from this solution. And we're going to do it very carefully. So it's called the reduction of order method. So if we know these two things, you can use the reduction of order method. And this, which will provide a second solution. to the homogeneous ODE, which was F2Y double prime plus F1Y prime plus F0Y equals 0, as well as a particular solution <coughs> to the non-homogeneous. So if it's not homogeneous, it looks 
similar on the left side, but it would be equal to some other function of x. So what is this reduction of order method? So what we're going to do is begin <coughs> with y2 of x equals y1 of x times the integral of ux dx So what is this u of x function? So this u of x is to be determined So this is going to be a pain if we keep writing the of x of x of x of x stuff. So let's stop writing those. Actually, let's write the ugly versions, and then I'll come back and write the We'll just write it without the of x right here. The other equation, y2 double prime, y1 double prime, integral u dx plus 2 y1 prime u plus y1 u prime. So they were, all I did right here is take the derivative of y2. So what rule do I have to use to take the derivative of what I just put the box around? I'll need the fundamental theorem of calculus, derivative, integral rule. But what do I need first? Product rule. So it's a derivative. Derivative is y1 prime times that integral plus y1 times the derivative of the integral, which is just u. It'll cancel the anti, the derivative will cancel the antiderivative. So this is just the uh, y1 times the derivative of the integral. Any questions on that right there? And then the second derivative is the derivative of this derivative. So you do product rule on the first one, which gets you y1 uh, prime prime right there times the integral plus there's an intermediate step that I skipped <coughs> so there'll be a y1 prime u right there and then when we look at the second term the product rule is y1 prime u so you get two of those middle terms it's a little strange but you get two of the middle terms so we've already reduced right there and then of course you get u one times uh, y one times u prime in your last term. So don't need to write that whole. So those are just two derivatives right there, the first and second derivative of y two at the top. <coughs> All right, what we're going to do now is plug it back in to the ODE. And we'll plug into the homogeneous ODE. So I'm going to rewrite y2 without the of x of x stuff. And let's not write the dx either. I think that will just be too much writing going on. 
So we'll really minimize this down. We know these are all x antiderivatives, so we just won't write the dx in there either. I'm just worried about our horizontal space, running out of horizontal space. We need to write quite a bit in one line. All right, so I'll write out the original ODE. So it was y, uh, f2 y double prime plus f1 y prime plus f0 y equals 0. So wherever you see a y, y prime or y double prime, we're going to plug in the y2, y2 prime, y2 double prime. Uh-oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Can I just reverse the order of the F subscripts? Yes. All right. And let's actually uh, be fair, and uh, let's write the ODE in the order that we're going to rewrite it down here. So we got F0Y <coughs> plus F1Y prime plus F2Y double prime. That should fix our problems with the least amount of erasing. One, two. All right. Just like before when we did this, things canceled out to zero. So we know y1 is the solution. So what is going to cancel out to zero? If I could find this pattern where everything is y1, I'll be able to add those terms up and get zero. So I'm looking for that pattern right there. So let's uh, distribute the f's around. You want to be a little bit careful with this notation. All of these, this is not f of this. This is not function composition, even though it's written just like function composition right here. So so just be aware, this is multiplication happening, not function composition. You would get something completely different if you did function composition. All right, so we're going to distribute everything out and then combine uh, terms so they look like uh, f1y plus f, well, so they look like that top identity there. So there's nothing to distribute in the first one. Somewhere we said that y1 is a solution, yeah. So given our y1 is a solution, so we get that y1 <coughs> f2 y1 double prime plus f1 y. 1 prime plus f0 y1 equals 0. So that's what it meant to be a homogeneous solution. If you plugged in y1, you would get that this would add up to 0. So all we have to do is group together terms that look like that. So I <coughs> see f2 y double prime. That's f2 y double prime, and I need f1 y 1 prime, prime 
right there, and I need an F0, Y1. So what I just underlined is going to add up to 0. So can I skip some steps and just cancel them out? So it's a little weird. You're going to get that. If I read it together, those add up to 0 times the integral of u. So it'll be 0. You just factor out that times the integral of u. So that'll cancel out. And I'll write the rest. I don't think anything else should cancel because the derivatives and the f functions are combined in uh, not matching ways. So I'll write out all the remaining terms. group up on derivatives of u. So I'm just going to factor out this u that we see right here. <coughs> write it in the original order. What order O to E do we have now? First order. Ah, oh, that's kind of nice. Our second order term just disappeared. Yes. And we can, let's see, what are we going to do next? Now we're going to do something to both sides. So we're going to multiply by dx over u times f2 times y1. And we're going to multiply both sides of this equation. Let's go ahead and distribute this across. So first we got two <coughs> F two Y one prime So the uh, U's cancel in that first multiplication. F2 and Y1 cancel on the second one. So we got U prime over U, DX equals zero. What would make us want to pick that to What's that? What would make us want to pick that to the DX over Us? We wouldn't have this level of insight. Okay. Uh, somebody who's been doing differential equations for years and years. Uh, would have maybe maybe would have this insight. Uh, I, was, I was trying to figure out if you logically picked that because you're trying to cancel. No, no, no. I'm reading my notes. Okay. <laughs> no, I did not just pick this. I mean, I could work go from one line to the next, but in terms of like, hey, let's multiply by this fancy thing that will make it work out. Yeah. I, I don't know that ahead of time. Now. I was like, did I miss a step? I'm not sure. <coughs> this is that is not obvious to multiply by that 
term right there. And now let's distribute over here. We'll get a little more cancellation. Each one's, each one's going to cancel a little differently. That's why I didn't want to cancel everything at once or distribute fully at, at first. So we've got 2 F2, F2 cancels, 2 DX over, or still 2 Y prime, 2 Y1 prime, DX over Y1. plus y1 dx over f2. Oh, thank you. Uh-oh, do we mess up somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the f2 cancels in the first term, but where did the f1 go in the second term? <coughs> Nowhere. Uh, oh, I canceled the y1. So F1 is, there we go. Does that work? TX. All right. So we're going to have to do changing our notation with calculus. Let's see, the middle term doesn't change around at all. That first term. So what we're going to do is rewrite that term. And that first one. did. Oh, they just cancel. No problem. <laughs> All right. So u prime, when we write u prime, we mean du. This is going to be an x derivative. And same thing with y1 prime, we mean dy1 over dx. So I'm just going to rewrite our derivatives in the fractional notation. And I got that. I basically isolated them so we can just drop in the two fractional forms right there. So I'd have fractions of fractions. So now we're going to do something that you don't do very often in calculus, which is treat dx like it's algebra. So we're going to cancel the dx divided by dx. And there's some other one, dx divided by the other dx. So it gets to cancel out. So we have <coughs> 2 over y1 dy1. I'm going to subtract that middle term to the other side. So we got 1 over u du equals negative f1 over f2 dx. <coughs> so what in the world are we trying to solve for? So we were given y1, and we're trying to find u somewhere half a mile back. So u of x is to be determined. So we're doing all this work to find out what is u. What are you? I think what is u is correct. It doesn't sound correct. It's because you don't know what u is. All right. How do we solve for you? You have enough skills to do so. So I see you. 
In fact, there's only one place U is not hanging out anywhere else. So we've collected it together pretty nicely. How in the world do I solve for U? Integrate. Yeah, integrate. So of course, you've got to integrate everything. You can't just integrate one term and leave the rest out there. So you've got to integrate every single term. So integrate, integrate, integrate. So we've got two super easy integrals. What is the first, going from the left side, what's that first antiderivative? 2 ln of y1. That's right, 2 ln y1. It's a little weird, but your variable is y1. So don't think more than that. It's just 1 over x dx, except your variable is not x anymore. 2 ln y1 <coughs> plus, what is this? This one's even easier. Ln u equal, I don't know f1 and f2, so I can't really do anything here. I could bring that negative out front. That's the only thing I can really do. And that really just depends on what our original coefficient functions were. That's f1 divided by f2, whatever that happens to be. All right. And oh, yes, we do get a plus c, but we're not going to, uh, we'll do the plus c at the very end. So we want to know what is u. And I could subtract this natural log, but let's go and use some natural log properties. So that was some algebra 2 moves right there. Just adding two natural logs is multiplying the inside parts. And ln inverse both sides. So it's e to the negative integral f1 over f2 dx. And last up, divide by y1 squared. Oh, that looks pretty nice. No problem. So that is our other solution right there. Now we better write down the other stuff that we started with. <coughs> so I believe your constant is hiding up there. So when you get that antiderivative, I think that is where your uh, constant will, will appear from. Uh, so I want to write what we started with and then what was uh, y2. So we began with f2 y double prime plus f1 y prime plus f0 y equals 0. And we got down to our y2 was y1 times the integral of this right here. where u is that result of that mess over here. So you've got to integrate, divide by y1 squared, and then integrate a second time, and then multiply by y1 and again. Uh, and you can't, uh, you can't cr sort of cross out one of those and just go squared, or, or cancel like that, because you can't bring a function across an antiderivative, unless you knew it was constant. But um, I don't think that will happen. So you could write the whole thing together if you want to in your cheat sheet. So if I combine everything together, I better use some parentheses. <coughs> That's what it looks like if you want to put all of it together. So you choose, do you want to go with the top two boxes or the bottom box? Well, I think either way you got to write the original form down so you know where F1 and F2 came from. <coughs> yeah.
And we got one example that we'll do. Yep. One example. So how do you know that you cannot use the other uh, techniques that we did the last few classes? So it actually only needs one of these two to not be constant. <laughs> the fact that both of them are constant is just, if at least one of them is constant, then uh, you cannot use those methods that we did before. So that only works for constant coefficients. So go ahead, write down F1, F2. You get the inside, the upper integral first. Divide by the y1 squared. Oh wait, I have to tell you a solution, don't I? Oh, you can't do anything. I better write that up here. And given y1 uh, is a solution. And of course, that y1 better not be 0. So let's really quickly check if x is actually a solution here. So check. I'll do this in green. The second derivative will be 0 plus x times 1 minus x. And that is x minus x is 0. So that is the solution. I will really try my hardest to not give you something that's not a solution, so you won't have to go and check that. All right, so go ahead and find these two antiderivatives carefully. So I'll give you about four minutes to get them. If you got extra time, you can check your answer. This was very computational. There's really no, you don't have to do very much other than follow the form and integrate twice. Just make sure you line things up correctly.
Any questions? You gotta be a little careful as your, with your constant. You do get a plus C, but you're multiplying that by your Y1 function. That's a good question. Which? So let's do this. Let's bring in a constant the first time we should and the second time we should, and then plug our answer back into the original and see if both of them uh, work out or if one of them needs to not be there. <coughs> so I will, let's see. <coughs> so this one should be plus C, All right? Or that'd be times e to the c. <coughs> so that'd be times e to the c. And we'll just call that a. We'll call it e to the c a right there. And so that'll be a constant that can move out front. So we'll get an a x. So here we have C times A, which will just be some new constant. Yeah. So we'll go negative A over 2x plus, we'll call this A1x. And that's not Y1, that's Y2. So let's see if we need both of these. So we're going to plug our Y2 back into the original. Good news is. It's not too difficult to do so. We're going to be a little careful with our derivatives. So we're going to plug back in. So this will be positive a over 2x squared plus a1. And y2 double prime plus zero. I'm skipping a lot of steps here. Are my derivatives right? So that negative two power cancels the two <coughs> to a negative one. All right, and we'll plug them back in. So x2, y double prime plus x times y2 prime plus or minus regular y2. This needs to be zero for all x values. So simplify negative a over x plus a over 2x plus a1x plus a over 2x minus a1x. So stuff cancels. So a1 is completely out of here. And a uh, fractions suck. Here we go. Common denominator. And that cancels out completely also. So we got 0 equals 0. It wouldn't matter what a1 and a are. So it looks like you should pick up a constant on each antiderivative. What does your book say? Does it mention the constants as you go in this section? Uh, section 23. So I'll write that note up here. Yeah, 
looks like they're using. They keep both of the constants? Yeah. All right. So you're doing two integrals, so you get two constants, which makes sense. Degree two should have two, um, a family uh, of two parameters. Yeah. <coughs> 